Hi everyone, welcome to yet another session at Pulse. Today in conversation are two super interesting individuals who have represented Sri Lanka at the 74th United Nations General Assembly, Gangulali De Silva as well as Amrit Edri Surya. Hi guys, thank you very much for being here with us. So before we move on to the discussion at the General Assembly, how about a round of introductions? Why don't you start? Yes, um, I'm Gangulali De Silva, I'm 22 years old. I'm a third year undergraduate at the Faculty of Law, University of Colombo. I'm also finally a law student at Sri Lanka Law College. Right. And how about you? Hi, uh, my name is Amrit. I'm also a student at Law College, sitting as attorneys. I finished my LLB recently. I finished a diploma in IR as well. And apart from this, I'm also functioning as one of the youth panel representatives for the UN Youth Peace Panel. Okay, right. And so before we move forward once again with the discussion, has there ever been any sort of prior engagement which you guys have had um, with youth related matters before this? Yes, um, so when I was basically 12, I started my own charity organization. Okay. I come from a village called Dunagaha, which is actually outside Colombo, but it's not that rural right now. Right. Um, so what we basically did was through this small charity organization, we helped a lot of families in our village itself. We conducted several motivational lectures, and then it went up to the extent of helping the needy and also building a couple of houses for people. Right. But other than that, uh, up until recent, I have been engaged in conducting motivational lectures, um, lectures on leadership and stuff at school. Wow, okay. That's very interesting. And how about you? Um, so I think I would go back to school okay. when I was actively in involved in Interact and quite a few student movements like that. They did a lot of work with young people. And following my time in Interact, I was given the opportunity to be in the district council as well, where we were in charge of all the Interact clubs in both Sri Lanka and the Maldives. And afterwards, me and a few friends given our passion to help other people and help other young people, we started a small organization of our own where we try to help underprivileged kids with their fundamental right to a quality education. So we have a few locations set up where we have a bunch of volunteers, they go and teach kids compute and English. Okay. Right, okay. So that's very interesting. And so talking about this opportunity which was given to you all, it's a massive opportunity, right? So could you just tell us a bit about how um, it led up to this particular point in your life? So basically the selections are done through the National Youth Service Council right. which operates under the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Uh, so what they basically do is they call for applications um, somewhere around mid, um, or actually around June, I think June. June okay. May, yeah. right. yes. And then they have a whole bunch of applications coming in out of which I think they filter some of yeah, the applications I think out. For the first, the third interview, yeah. sorry the first interview, first interview there is 75 candidates that they have shortlisted it to. Then at the second interview they cut that down to 25. And then at the final interview, which consists of an interview plus a public speech, they have 10 finalists. And out of the 10 finalists, they choose one boy and one girl. Okay, right. And what does it mean to you guys to actually represent your country at such a global forum? I would start with saying it's a huge opportunity. But other than that, it comes with a lot of responsibility. Because at the end of the day, we've been appointed by the government, by the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Um, so basically, we are going to be the voice of the youth of the country. And we have to make sure we represent all of them and not just the particular part of the youth of the country. And yeah. the problems are many, actually. Yes, but it's again an amazing opportunity. I think it's immense. And I think one beautiful thing about this is the platform that it gives you because you have a network where you can reach out to so many young people, both internationally and globally. Sorry, internationally and locally. So I feel that there's a lot of great change and great differences you can make in the local context using this platform. Right, okay, that's very interesting. And let's talk about the third committee meeting. So both of y'all were active participants within that particular meeting, right? So before we move on with that particular discussion, could y'all tell the viewers out there what exactly the third committee meeting agenda is actually hold? Um, well, actually the third committee meeting is just one part of the 74th General Assembly because the General Assembly itself consists of a large amount of meetings. So the third committee meeting basically consists of icons such as social development, advancement of women and drug prevention. So initially, uh, we as the two youth delegates, we were uh, yes, supposed to... I think women, yes, women, women empowerment, empowerment and empowerment. child rights. Right. Yes, okay. yes, we were initially uh, planning to speak on that, but then again, we were sent to make the youth statement. Right. So it made more sense for us to speak under the social development icon. So um, those are basically the topics which are being covered at the third committee right. meeting. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, the committee goes on for a couple of weeks in yes. depth covering all these topics. Right. Um, so, as, uh, so in addition to that, could you all actually talk about the youth statement which you all made? Why was it so important to raise certain issues such as 
um, unemployment issues as well as youth uh, empowerment. So could you just talk a bit about that as well? Um, so initially before we left, we had to meet a couple of stakeholders, right. mostly uh, we met with the Ministry of Youth Affairs, also we met with the UN Resident Coordinator and also the UNDP. So um, what we wanted to know was what was their focus area, what are the problems they identify and are they the same problems which we identify as the youth in this country. Exactly. So uh, we looked into the problems, we looked into the recommendations and it was the role of us to make sure at the third committee meeting that we bring up what our country has done so far and what we are actually planning to do. Yeah, so in addition to all of those, we thought as well, given everything that Sri Lanka has been through, that we would talk about the resilience of Sri Lankan people because Sri Lanka really has been through a great deal, but I think that young people have been at the forefront of rebuilding Sri Lanka. And we thought that it was a, it was a very important thing to go out there and tell the rest of the world that it's the young people who are at the forefront of the development of Sri Lanka. Exactly. So is that one key reason why you feel that it's really important that youth should be representatives at such a global forum such as this of one? Of course. And we are always advocates to represent that young people should represent should be represented globally and locally as well in all levels of the decision making process. Okay, that's very interesting. And um, let's talk about the solutions and the recommendations which they have given on grassroots levels. So what could you say are the steps which have been taken to kind of overlook and address these issues which you all spoke of? So the thing is the problems are not small, right? There's a vast spectrum of problems right there. But we in our youth statement, we particularly choose unemployment, education, climate change and reconciliation and youth representation as our key uh, focal areas. So when doing that, we actually realized when we were having our interviews with the stakeholders that the government has taken certain steps. But other than that, as a youth, we have a lot more to do from our side, which is going to actually benefit the society as a whole. So apart from speaking about what the state has already taken as active mechanisms, we also believe that the youth has to greatly engage in all of these because um, so we basically look at problems in a very general level. But there are problems which go deep down than that. So problems need to be uh, engaged and addressed at a very grassroots level. And for that, we definitely need youth participation. And I think one key um, recommendation and implementation the state has done is the National Youth Volunteer Service, which they implemented a couple months ago. And I think it is a brilliant start where we, they, the state started recommending that young people start taking responsibility for their community and start volunteering and they made a, I think they passed the cabinet paper as well if I'm not mistaken, to give a structure and actually appreciate the volunteer work done by young people. So I think that is a great step forward. Okay, right. And Amit, you were actually talking about how um, it's very important, especially for youth, to kind of grow their network and especially on an international yeah. level, right? So tell me about the experience that both, well, both of y'all had uh, when dealing with international delegates from different countries. I'm pretty sure there were key takeaways, right? So could you just comment about that a bit? Um, firstly, I think it was amazing because in one room you had almost all nationalities there and you learned so much. Aside from the whole young person's perspective, you learned so much about the cultures of all these other countries and you really learn that there's a huge world outside our little island here. And I think some, something that we can really relate to Sri Lanka is when we were there in the committee and outside the committee, well, we were talking to the other youth delegates. We were hearing their stories, what they're doing in their countries. And it's amazing to hear how around the world, young people are taking such a huge, important role in driving for change. And some of the examples we heard were for example, Albania, Australia, in these countries, it's the young people who are going around, going around their country, conducting workshops for climate change, women's rights, child rights. And one thing we realized is that in a lot of countries, even in Sri Lanka, that when you go to certain areas, they don't really know what the UN is and what the UN agenda is. And it was really interesting to see that it's the young people who are driving this change, who are going around and telling people, this is what the UN is doing, this is how it can help all of us. And I think those were really important best practices and lessons that we learned that we can bring back to Sri Lanka. And we're actually hoping on documenting all of these things that we learned and applying it in the next year. And we're actually trying to make a report that all following youth delegates can follow and we want to make sure that this experience we have is brought back to Sri Lanka exactly. as much as possible. Right, so I see that you all are trying to do something in your own way, yes. is it? Yes. yes. All right, so that's very interesting. And before we move forward with our final question, um, what 
future does it does it hold for both of y'all um, as United Nations youth delegates? Um, for starters, there's a lot that has to be done. But um, since we have already identified several key issues, Amrit will speak specifically about some of them. Um, so um, on a very personal level, I personally want to uh, reach out to the areas which is outside Colombo right. and basically raise awareness on drug prevention and domestic violence. That is two focal areas which I will be focusing on. But other than that, we have a huge backing from the National Youth Service Council, which is basically the hub where all the youth of the country connects to. So through that, we are planning to do several other programs which will basically focus on these areas we have already addressed on. Okay, right. Yeah, and I think as Gangzali said that NYC has huge backing. I think um, it's referred to in Signal as Tarunayangi Mahagadara, if I'm not mistaken. So. Um, along with NYC, we've identified a lot of crucial areas that I, we as young people can take a stand on. And some of them, I think the most crucial is climate change. And we had a chat about this with Hannah Singh as well. And we have the UN's complete backing as well. And in the next year, we are hope we were in the discussion process at the moment. And we're hoping to start a program where we can engage as many young people as possible to start understanding the collective responsibility we have as young people for this global issue and that we all need to start working on it. And actually we'd like to make an appeal to any of you all who are watching this video to feel free to get in touch with us because we're going to be having a lot of programs in the coming year purely focused on this and we'd love to collaborate with other young people because it's our planet, it's our future, and it's our collective responsibility. Exactly, right. So you actually just answered my final question where I wanted okay. you to okay. um, give out a message to the youth. But is there anything else which you would like to add to the youth? Well, um, I mean, right now we are laying a lot of groundwork for the way work we will be kicking off in the coming year. Um, the problem is we actually want the youth to be more open-minded and open to their problems. For the fact about climate change, which we have been like greatly focusing on, Sri Lankans still don't understand that we are in danger. Because um, by 2017, while Sri Lanka was ranked as the second country to have the most impact on climate change, but the immediate earlier decade, which is from 1998 to 2017, Sri Lanka was nowhere near the top 10. But immediately we have proceeded to the second in the ranking. So that itself is a problem. And I think it demands immediate action. And for that, as the people who are going to make decisions for tomorrow, I think we all need to step up. It's not just someone coming up there and being like, okay, this is what we need to do. But I think everyone has an individual responsibility to play in this. And if I can add one more thing, I think one key takeaway that I had was, while we were there, we saw young people who were at the forefront of change, like we said before. They were making youth resolutions. They were negotiating with diplomats from all sorts of countries to drive change across the globe. And as a message to young people in Sri Lanka, I would urge everyone to take a stand. Don't wait for other people to make the change for you because you are no longer the leaders of the future. You need to be the leaders of today and start acting now. Um, and how could the youth who are interested in kind of being advocates of change reach out to you all? Um, we have our Facebook page, right. Sri Lanka Youth Delegates to the United Nations. Right. And then that both of us are active on Facebook okay. and Instagram. Uh, yeah. Kangalali any, and Amrit. Yes. Any way you can reach us, social <laughs> yes. media, email, whatever it is. Even if you see us on be, the road somewhere, yes. just feel free, feel free yes. to come by. It and have doesn't a have to be very yeah. official and formal. Exactly. Yeah. Right. All right, there you have it, guys. Um, that was our interview with these two super interesting individuals. And I think the key takeaway, the message which I got, was to be an advocate of change. Regardless if yeah, it's yeah. on a large scale or even on a small scale, change is change, right? And so you have to be the leaders of today rather than focusing on tomorrow. So thank you very much for being here with thank us. You so it was an absolute us. pleasure having both of you all here. Thank and you. thank you very much for watching. Hi guys, thanks for watching. To keep up with the pulse of Sri Lanka, subscribe to our channel here. To catch our latest videos, click here and here. Keep living it.